Well, hello and welcome. You are listening to an episode of Unlocking the Word, where we spend time together in devotions with the goal to understand what the Bible is saying and what God wants to speak to you today. Our reading for today is in Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 28. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, this is another day that you have made, and we are glad in it. As we read your word, will you speak to us through it? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 28, and this is the New Living Translation. Once, when John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, some people came to Jesus and asked, Why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples and the Pharisees do? Jesus replied, Do wedding guests fast while the celebrating of the groom? Of course not. They can't fast while the groom is with them. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. For wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. One Sabbath day, Jesus was walking through some grain fields. His disciples began breaking off heads of the grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Abathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. So he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people, not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Do you have a verse that is standing out to you? Take a moment and look back over the passage. Then write down the verse that stood out to you. Now let's ask our observation questions. And we'll start with who. Who is this about? Or who is mentioned? When and where is this taking place? Or this was written? What? What is happening? What are the events in this passage? Why? Why is this being told to us? Or why are these events taking place? How? How is this being illustrated to us? And also, look for any repeated words or any commands. Now let's go over some of these answers together. And we'll start with who. I noticed John's disciples and the Pharisees as well as Jesus and his disciples. But then there was also a reverence, reference to David and his companions during the time when Abathar was the high priest. So this is telling us to take note of an Old Testament reference. To answer the question of when, it's about the same time frame as discussed in the previous episodes. However, the Sabbath and the time of fasting was also discussed in this passage. 
to answer where, we can assume that we're still in Capernaum, as in the previous scriptures that have been mentioned. Okay, so this leads us to the what. What is going on here? First, we have a period of time when everyone, or at least the Jewish people, are required to fast. But Jesus and his disciples were not fasting. It was customary for them to fast at least two times a week, at least up to this point in Jesus' day. It was required two times a week. So when Jesus is questioned as to why they aren't fasting, he answers them by saying it was a time of celebration. The only time that a fast could be broken was, for example, a wedding, because that is considered a time of celebration, which is why Jesus mentions it here. He was telling them he is the groom and they are in a time of celebration and you don't fast when the groom is with you. But then Jesus starts talking about the old cloth and the sewing of a new cloth to it, which doesn't work for anyone who sews because an old patch and a new patch, when they get washed together, the new patch will shrink and it rips. Just kind of like the scripture was telling us. Those who are in the sewing and, and crafting, you understand that. And so that makes sense to you. But then Jesus starts talking about pouring fresh wine into an old wineskin. And this would cause the old wineskin bag to burst and spill the wine everywhere. So a side note, wine expands as it ferments. Therefore, it requires a fresh wineskin to pour into because it is elastic and it can expand, whereas the old one cannot. Okay, so what does all this have to do with fasting? Well, we're going to come back to that because now we have to discuss the next section of the passage. And trust me, they go together. And the funny thing about all of this is that we're still answering the what question, but we're gonna move on to verse 23. The disciples and Jesus are traveling or walking somewhere when they came across a grain field. Apparently they were hungry, so they broke off some of the grain and they did the little process that they had to do so they could eat it. But the problem was that it was the Sabbath. The Sabbath was a day where absolutely no work of any kind is permitted because this is the law. Even tying a knot to a bucket to lower down into a well to get some water was considered work. So the disciples breaking of the grain, and again, the process to do that is considered work. Thus, they were breaking the law. But Jesus responds to the Pharisees by referencing a time from the Old Testament which was in 1 Samuel 21, verses 1 through 6. The issue was not that they were stealing the grain because what they were doing was absolutely permissible. The issue was that it's the Sabbath. But Jesus brings up that David and his companions ate the holy bread from the temple table that was only for the priests to eat. But David and his companions were in need for food and their hunger was greater than the law. The human need became greater than the law. Jesus follows this by saying that the Sabbath was made for the people, not the people for the Sabbath. And the Son of Man is Lord over the Sabbath. Whew, this is a lot going on in just 11 verses. I'm not going to answer the questions of why and how directly because they're going to be answered as I go over my verse and tie all of this information together. And you're probably wondering what these different events have to do with each other, because that was my question. But once I saw verse 27, it all made sense to me. Verse 27 says, Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people, not people to meet the requirement of the Sabbath. But then we move on to verse 28. It says, so the son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath. And yes, verse 27 and a little bit of 28 are the verses that spoke to me. So what does all of this mean? Jesus was using parables and stories to express that this is a time to celebrate because the bridegroom or the Messiah as we knew him was here and that the old way of doing things will not fit the new kingdom of God. The Pharisees took the law that was given to Moses and they went too far. Things were being done as a ritual, not as a devotion and a love for God that, wasn't, that it was intended to be. It became about the religion and not about a relationship with the Almighty God. Jesus challenges these rituals because he was here for the people. 
His entire life was centered around the people that he loved. The laws that were originally established were to meet the needs of the people. For instance, the Sabbath. God knows that we cannot work seven days a week without rest. Even he took a day of rest when he created us. Our physical bodies just cannot take it. So he created the Sabbath for us to rest, which is what Jesus was reminding the Pharisees of in verse 27. But he takes it a step further and he tells them that he has the authority even over the Sabbath. But if you're the one who created the Sabbath, then you're the one who says what it's for. And once again, we are being shown Jesus' authority. First, we were shown by his forgiving of sins. And now he's showing us his authority even over the Sabbath. So what does all this mean to me? Well, to start, do you have a Sabbath day? A day that you can fully rest. You need one if you don't. Second, why do you do what you are doing, such as going to church, post-pandemic of course, or read your Bible and pray? Is it out of a ritual or because you desire to have a relationship with God? And finally, our relationship with Jesus can be hindered by continuing to live in the old ways. When Jesus comes into our life, we have to allow the newness of God to come in as well. His new life cannot fit the old form of life, meaning that there may be some areas that will require change. Know that this isn't a bad thing. It is good for you. I know I have shared a lot, but I hope it helps you pull it all together, what this passage is trying to say. Based on what I have shared and with whatever verse that spoke to you, take a moment, say or write a prayer to God. Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking through your word to me and to those that are listening. Thank you for showing us that you are Lord, not because you're arrogant or proud, but because you use your authority to demonstrate your love for your people by meeting our needs, whether it be food, rest, or even forgiveness. Holy Spirit, help me to continue to change these areas in my life that I need change. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for listening, especially if you made it to the end. I hope you are blessed by listening, but more so, I hope you are learning through these episodes as we read Mark. I know we're going through the passages slowly, but that's the point. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Not to mention, there is just too much good stuff to race through the Bible. Don't forget, you can leave any comments on my website at kennymckee.com or down below if you're viewing this on the YouTube channel. Until next time, be blessed.